Hey guys, I'm David Genevico. I am a member of the Humminbird Pro Staff and we are on Kentucky Lake today. It is a steamy hot June day, which is per perfect for idling around looking for these schooling fish. You know, this is one of the questions I get all the time about how do we go out on the lake, how do we set up our units, and how do we actually find bass and find schools of bass. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to take you through from setup, how we actually put our units uh, together, how we put the parameters where you need to have them. We're going to go out on the lake, idle around, we're going to find some schools of fish. I'm going to show you specifically what bass look like. We'll probably see some other types of fish, try to differentiate that a little bit. But I think this is going to be really educational for you. You know, I've been on the Humminbird Pro Staff for seven or eight years. I spend almost all my time out here on Kentucky Lake, and I've won quite a few bucks idling around staring at these hummingbirds. It's going to be a great day. Stick with us. We're going to go find some bass. I'm in on the down imaging right here, and you can see these guys kind of sitting in the black right there. We'll go back and forth over them a few times. That's not a bunch. You see five or six, uh, but we're going to go back and forth over them and, and maybe catch a few. When you see them right here next to the bottom, those are the ones that are a lot easier to catch. When we get them way up off the bottom, we kind of kind of change tactics a little bit. But you're basically going to see in the black part here, that's you're looking at kind of the same thing on the side and the down of what you see in the black. The black is the part that's under the boat. I'll hopefully in a second we'll show you some and what the bass look like off to the side. But these are just you know a, a little handful of bass kind of sitting right there on the bottom. I'm gonna idle back over them and see how many we can find right here. side imaging right here there's a bass there's one bass that I see below the boat here it's that one little dot but here's what I really want you to see right here and this is what a lot of people miss this is a big secret to side imaging if you look over here where I just put my cursor those are bass off to the side now a lot of times people think that you're looking for the white dots you are looking for the white dots when they're under the boat in the black part but it's hard to see the white dots when you're looking off to the side and so off to the side, bass show up as shadows. And there's, you can probably count them, there's about 15 little black dots. So it looks kind of more like pepper off to the side. I told you it looks like Tic Tacs under the boat. Kind of looks like somebody sprinkled pepper, these little black dots right here off to the side. And those are what bass are gonna look like when, when they're not directly under the boat, when you're seeing them on the side imaging. Again, the bottom is very hard right here. You see that bright reflection. So we're looking at a shell bed with 15 or so bass kind of sitting right on that on the side of the boat there. That's a long story. Good one. <clears throat> Come here, girl. You don't ever know how big they are on this thing. You just gotta let them swim around with it. Come on, are you tired yet? Let's go. Alright. It's a pretty good little chunk. Three and a half, three and three quarter. A little strike king finesse worm. You know, we saw those fish that were real scattered. You know, we came over them and I, you know, I saw five or six and sometimes when they're like that, you can't get them to bite, you know, a reaction bait as well. So I'll throw that drop shot to get them started. We'll throw back in there and see if we can catch another one. But it's a good little chunk. It's 
So we idled back and forth over there. There's just a little bar right here, tops off in about 17 feet. And we just caught a pretty nice fish on it. The fish were real scattered. We didn't see just a big mega school or anything, but saw four or five. And I caught a, caught a pretty good one on a drop shot. I marked a waypoint on the fish when we saw them. And so when you have your hummingbird units tied together, you can see the waypoint that you marked. And, and uh, that's what we're looking at right here. So I put a little waypoint. We're looking at a Lake Master map. And the Lake Master uh, is absolutely just amazing on the Tennessee River. We've got one foot increments, but you can see, you can kind of see in red my little lines here, but I put a waypoint right there where I saw those fish. And if you look over here on the sonar, there's actually a fish. Let's stop that. There's actually some fish sitting right here on the bottom these little lines that you see laying right there is a bass just laying right there on the bottom, right under that waypoint. I mean, directly where we saw them back there with the side scan, we can see them on our electronics right here. You know, when you're fishing, I am constantly staring at my sonar up here. I like to run sonar on the front. Um, this is chirp sonar. I've got it set 180 to 220 kilohertz. Chirp just gives you a real uh, definite picture, target separation between fish and the bottom. And so I'll set, I'll set my chirp up here and I'm constantly staring at this because if you see some fish and you think you know where they are and you're casting at them a lot of times, I can't tell you hundreds of times in tournaments, I've actually seen the fish directly underneath me on the sonar back the boat up and drag a bait through them or wind a crankbait or swim bait through them and actually catch them. So I think sometimes we get really, really hung up on where our waypoints are and where we saw them when we idled over them. But that's the biggest thing you need to learn about ledge fishing is those fish move around. They don't sit in one exact spot, especially when you catch one, you can pull them out. So I'm constantly staring at my sonar uh, and looking for where those fish are right at that moment because they're gonna move around. We're gonna try to catch them wherever they are. All right guys, so we're gonna take you through how you can take your hummingbird unit straight out of the box and set it up to go out on the lake like we're gonna do today and, uh, and hunt for fish. So what I've done is I've taken, this is a Helix 12, I've taken and restored to factory default. So this is just the way you're gonna take it out of the box when you get your Helix unit. On the Hummingbird unit, to get to your main menu, you hit the menu button twice. So I'm gonna go menu, menu, and I'm just gonna go through several little tweaks that I do. Quite honestly, the factory settings work very well, but there's a few little tweaks that I like to do when I first get my units. Um, if we look at sonar, I'll just go through this real quickly. On the chirp, it's set to high frequency. I'm just going to leave it on high frequency. Chirp is a pretty new technology, and to be quite honest, a lot of people still haven't figured out the best, uh, the best use of it for bass fishing. The, the principle behind chirp is it is a series of frequencies instead of just one sampling frequency, and it gives better target separation for the fish or the structure that you're looking at. So I'm just going to leave my 2D chirp on high frequency. On the imaging frequency, with my Hummingbird units, I've always found that 455 works better. I think primarily that's because I like to shan shallower water, you know, 25 feet deep or less. Um, a lot of people use 800 kilohertz for deeper water. I leave mine on 455. Um, switch fire clear mode. Clear mode just basically means you're turning down your sensitivity a little bit. It gives you a little bit less trash in the water, especially if you're fishing on the river and it's got some, some color to it. Clear mode tends to give you a little bit clearer of a picture. If I'm drop shotting or specifically look trying to look at my bait, I'll switch it to what's called max mode. And max mode is essentially just turning up our sensitivity. Um, I'm gonna just go through real quickly. Nothing else I'm gonna really change significantly. We'll look at our side imaging and down imaging uh, menu here in just a second. If I look at uh, my navigation screen, so navigation is going to be your charts and maps. The only real thing that I usually change on here is I'll go down here to chart orientation and I'm just going to hit my arrow here. I turn it to course up. Now different people prefer to use this different ways. I'm telling you how I prefer to set up my unit. Course up means that the direction that I am traveling my map is going to orient in that direction, meaning if I'm going south, south is in front of the boat. If I'm going north, north is in front of the boat. The reason I like that is I can really, me personally, better tell, okay, I'm coming up on a ditch or I'm coming up on a high spot. It's going to be on the right side of the boat. So I usually change that to course up. Uh, if you're smarter than me, you can leave it on north up. 
but you have to constantly sort of orient yourself of which direction is north. So course is going to turn your map so that the map is showing the direction that you're traveling. Um, that's really all that I usually do to change on my navigation screen here. Uh, I'll just go through these other ones real quickly. Again, I'm not making many changes uh, from what the factory settings are. Um, we'll talk about the chart here for just a second. One of the very best features about Humminbird are, the, are using, being able to use the Lake Master charts. Lake Master charts are phenomenal, uh, especially on the Tennessee River. You know, I can remember the first time I ever put one in, I idled off into a place I knew well and found a high spot I didn't know was there and found a school of fish on it. So it really gives you a lot of detail, one foot increments, very good mapping. One of the things that I like to do here is I'm going to highlight the depths that I want to look at. So um, if we go down here to depth colors, you can basically change what colors you're going to see in different areas. So two ways to set this up. Um, on depth highlight, let's, let's go over and change our view here so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go to the map screen so we can actually watch it happen on the map. All right. And then let's travel out here to the middle of the lake. Okay. So if we go back to our, our and I just hit menu, menu again to get back to that. What I can do is I can change what depth I want to highlight. And if you watch this green, it's kind of sneaking out deeper. I'm at seven feet right now and the depth range plus or minus five. So I'm really doing seven feet plus or minus five, which means 12 to two. But the more I click this, the further you'll see these green lines come out. Well, let's say it's summertime on Kentucky Lake and I'm really looking for ledges that are gonna be from, let's say 12 feet to 17 feet. So I can take my depth highlight to 12 and I can leave my range plus or minus five and everything that is highlighted in green now on my map is going to be from 7 feet to 17 feet. And you can play with that. You know, you can do, you can do a little bit smaller range. You can do a larger range. But it really makes keying in on exactly the depth that you're looking for really easy. Because you can go down the lake and you can see those colors. And you can vary that very easily. The other thing that I'll do here on this screen is I'll do my shallow water highlight. And that's basically... I really do that for safety. You know, I'm going to highlight everything that is four feet and under. And so now if you'll look at my graph here, I'll clear this out. Anything that's four feet and less is going to be red. And so this is really key, you know, in the winter time when the lake's at winter pool, I might highlight six feet and under because if the lake drops down four feet, I want to know what's shallow to keep me safe. The other thing is sometimes they get on really shallow spots in the fall. That's a good way to do that. So that is one of my favorite features about the Humminbird is being able to use that Lake Master and really customize it. And again, to get to that, all I did was menu, menu. I tab over here to the Humminbird chart and I can change that depth highlight. But Lake Master is a really big advantage to using a, a Humminbird unit. So we just came over the tip of this point and there's a group of bass and you can see them both on the side imaging and on the down imaging. And they're sitting in about 22 feet look at them right here. And what I'm going to do, if you look at on the helix here, we can mark actually exactly where the fish are. So we've idled over again. We're seeing our little tic tacs down there. That's what we've been looking for. That's not a big giant group, but there's several fish right there. So I'm going to bring my cursor over here and I'm going to put a waypoint, just hit the mark button, and I put a waypoint exactly where those fish are so that when we circle back around, We'll be able to make sure that we're sitting right on them. You can do the same thing on the down imaging. If we want to change our screen here, uh, you can hit menu. It tells us which side is active. We're going to change it to the left. Now, of course, we've our cursor has gone on, but then we can put a cursor on the down imaging where we see our fish. But we're going to idle around a little bit more, see if we can see a few more, and then we'll make a couple casts and try to catch some. Okay, so we're idling around. We just saw a few bass, and when we came off of this ledge right here, I'm gonna show you this. We drove over a brush pile, and I have a lot of guys talk to me and say, "Boy, I found a lot of fish, but I couldn't get them to bite." 
And I think a lot of times people are really looking at brush, they're seeing brush and not necessarily seeing fish. So let me just show you this. If you drive over a brush pile just at the perfect angle, at the perfect speed, it'll look just like a tree. But a lot of times when you don't hit it just exactly right, you'll see something that looks like this. And so if you look right here, you can actually see some tree limbs sort of coming down that ledge. And this is a big pile of brush at the bottom. When you see this vertical orientation, and it almost looks like fish sort of stacked on top of each other, that is a vertical piece of structure. Those are not bass. You know, this could be a little bass right here, sitting right there, but when you see that vertical orientation, you see all of this white right here, you can also see it on the side image in here. What you're looking at is, is brush pile. Um, you can see kind of this same little tree right here, shows up there. Now these two little dots right there, those are fish. Uh, look a little small to be bass. You can also see some brush over here to the side. But again, if you see that little vertical uh, pattern, you're not seeing fish, you're seeing brush. We're gonna talk about the parameters of how we're gonna set up our imaging, uh, side imaging and our down imaging. From any screen that you're actually, when you're actually looking at your data here, you can hit the menu key. The menu key right here is going to show the menu for the screen that is highlighted. And you see this little arrow pointing to the right, that's telling me we're gonna look at the menu for side imaging. So when I hit the menu, first it says active side right, which means we're looking at this window here. Split position is telling me how big this box is. So if I change the split position, I'm making that box smaller. Now, here's a big secret with the side imaging. As big as you can get it, because when you're looking for bass, you're looking for small detail. And the bigger the screen that you're looking at, the better. I usually people ask me what unit should I get? I tell them the biggest one that you can afford for actually idling around looking because the bigger that screen is for side imaging, the better your detail is going to be. So I'll set this 30. I think you can actually go down to 20, but I like 30 so I can still see my window uh, for my down imaging there. If I hit, uh, I'll get out. If I hit menu again, we'll go down. SI side just means whether we're looking to the right or left and we're looking both. Sensitivity comes at 10. That is usually where I leave it. Now, depending on water clarity, depending on depth, sometimes I might go up to 11 or I might go down to nine. I rarely go any further than one or two away from the 10 setting where the unit comes. It works really well there. So if ever I get in somebody's boat and they say my unit's really off, I don't know what's going on. I look and their sensitivities at 17 or it's at five. Stay really close to 10 and that's what you want to do. Enhance is really the same way. Um, you've got a contrast, and I rarely go more than one or two clicks from 10. 10 is gonna work well in most situations. Again, I might play with that just a little bit uh, if I feel like I'm not seeing as clearly. That has to do with water, uh, with water clarity, but usually I'm gonna stay right on 10. I don't mess with the sharpness. I usually leave that off. Contour mode is gonna actually, I'll show you what contour mode does. Contour mode, takes the middle part out. So it takes the black part out. I've looked at side imaging a lot and I don't like that. I like to be able to see what's directly under the boat. That's very similar to what you see on the down. So again, I'm gonna leave that there. Let me get back to that screen. And I'm gonna turn my contour mode off. Okay, and then you'll see again, cause we're in very shallow water, you don't see that, but you'll see the black part being the water column underneath the boat. Okay, colors. I keep this very simple. On the Humminbird units, I really like to use Amber 1 on really bright sunny days, and I will use Brown on real cloudy days. Brown shows fish really well, and again, we're in very shallow water, so we're not seeing this, but Brown shows fish very, very well, but when it's bright and sunny, it's harder to see. Amber 1 is number two, the number two default on the Humminbird. Um, I like Amber 1 for most conditions. Blue's okay also, a lot of guys use blue. My personal preference is for amber one, which is number two on here. Okay, last tweak we're gonna do uh, to our side imaging. Let's look at the range. The default comes at 120 feet. That's 120 feet to either side of the boat. If you were looking for a bass that is, let's say he's a foot long, 
that means on one side of the boat, he's gonna be one 120th of the size of this window. That's very small. So the shorter distance that you look at, the easier it is to pick out fish. I usually use from about 50 to 60 feet on my range. I just set it to 55. And that's really ideal. I will go a little bit further out if I'm looking for a big piece of structure like a big grass bed or you know something sunken under the water because uh, you can see something really big at a bigger distance. But when you're looking for bass, 50, 55, 60, maybe 65, I would not go much further than that. If you have a smaller unit, you need to go even less because again, your screen is smaller so the bass are gonna show up smaller. So 50 to 60 is, is really ideal. All right, so anytime you're on the Tennessee River, Cumberland River, a lot of people are seeing Asian carp. There's a lot of Asian carp in these lakes. And Asian carp will sit on the same kind of places as bass. And basically what they look like is they look like bass, only a lot bigger. And we're looking out to the right side of the boat here, so off into the deeper water. It's shallower on the left, deeper on the right. These are Asian carp right here. And you see the big, big shadows that you're seeing. Bass are not gonna cast a shadow that big. Bass is a lot smaller of a shadow. So <laughs> basically my rule of thumb is if they look too big to be bass, they're usually Asian carp. Although I have to admit I've thrown on them a time or two just thinking it might be the mother load. But we'll, uh, you'll see that a lot on the Tennessee River. Okay, so let's talk about our parameters for down imaging. Again, I'm, I've already set my shortcut key to one of my favorite screens, which has my side imaging and my down imaging. I'm gonna take my little arrow over to this window so that we can work on our parameters for down imaging. So if I hit the menu key, it's telling me which side is active. I'm gonna change that to the left, which highlights my down imaging. Okay, now, most of this we've already set up and I'm really not gonna change things from what we did on our side imaging. Split position, again, that tells me how big this window is. I've got the windows set with my down imaging being 30% of my screen and my side imaging being 70. The down sensitivity in the DI Enhance is just like the side imaging sensitivity and side imaging enhance. I stay very close to 10 on my Humminbird units. Again, sometimes I'll go up to 11 or 12, sometimes I'll go down to nine, but rarely should you stray far from 10 because 10 is really gonna give you the best picture. Um, upper range is usually zero. That's just saying the black part is gonna be the water column under the boat. And then my lower range, I leave it on auto. Uh, the Humminbird unit does a real good job of finding the bottom. I've had units that didn't, but this will immediately set the window as it needs to be. So for example, right now we're sitting in basically one foot of water and you see 10 feet. If we were sitting in 20, you would see about 30 feet. So it's, it's auto adjusting for that, uh, for that depth. Chart speed, five is good. Sometimes I'll crank it up just a little bit from that. I don't like to get going too fast. Um, depends on how fast you're idling the boat, but again, five or six is very good on that. And then the last one is the color, which we discussed when we were talking about um, when we were talking about the side imaging. Again, I prefer amber one, which is the number two default on the helix unit. Uh, the other one that I prefer under low light conditions is my brown, which is number four. But really, it already comes with amber one as a default. So really, on the down imaging, I did not change anything. On the side imaging from the default, the real the only thing I really changed was I changed the, uh, the range that we were looking at. The default is 120, and I went down to about 55 or 60. So we're really talking about minimal adjustments from how it comes from factory settings. Okay, so we just up, rode over some fish and marked a waypoint. I've switched screens now. Now we're looking at the map with the down scan, down imaging. Uh, and I'm gonna idle back over those guys and get another look at them. So the fish are, where I marked them is right there where you see that little blue dot. And they were kind of laying right in the bottom. And here you see them, here they come. One, two, three, four right there. Kind of just hit the edge of them. There's some more, one, two. And here you see some as we're getting shallower, they're kind of laying up on top of this drop. That's Now this right here is bait fish, but these are bass stop my screen there so these are bait fish but we're seeing bass as we're kind of coming up so the bass were laying more kind of right in the on the edge of the dropper as the drop is going down you see some bait fish up on top 
but uh, let's turn around and catch some. That sounds like a good plan to me. Another one on the old drop shot. Dude. He bit the little Strike King finesse worm again. Purple Haze. We saw a little wad of them, didn't see a big bunch. Again, today they're not really pulling much current, so the, the schools of fish we're seeing are having five, six, eight fish in them, and I'm having to resort to the Finesse tactics to get him, but that's a chunky little fish. Oh, I jumped in the wrong way. All right. Okay, so we're going to go through how we set up our sonar now. So we've talked some about the side imaging and the down imaging, but here's how we set up sonar. Now, Humminbird units in the Helix series. The Helix 12 is chirp capable, and chirp basically instead of being a single frequency is multiple frequencies or a frequency sweep when it is sampling or, or doing its clicks. Um, we'll talk about chirp in a second, but the units that are smaller than the 12, the 9, the 10, etc., only have the regular 2D sonar. So I'm going to set right now my, my regular 2D sonar settings. I've got chirp turned off. If we look at, and I'll go show you how I got here, just menu, menu and I'm going to my sonar tab. This is my main menu screen. On my 2D display frequency, I prefer 200 kilohertz. 200 kilohertz is gonna give us the most detail. It is a little bit narrower of a cone angle, but it's gonna give us a lot of good detail. If you go to 83, you see, of course, we're in very shallow water, but you get a lot more reflection. That's fine in deeper water, and it covers a wider range, but it's a little bit less detail than what you get at a higher frequency. So I'm gonna leave that on 200. We've already talked about imaging display. Surface clutter, I get this question a lot. What does surface clutter do? Well, again, we're in very shallow water here, but surface clutter takes away the reflection that you get in the first couple feet of the water column. So if I lower my surface clutter, you see this little line there goes away. Once you get in deeper water, that doesn't matter nearly as much because our screen might be looking at 20 feet and our surface clutter is really right on the top. So I'm gonna leave that at five. Switch fire is Humminbird's way of very quickly changing the sensitivity of the unit. So rather than scrolling 10, 11, 12, switch fire is going to allow me to very quickly go from a higher sensitivity to a lower sensitivity. Clear mode is really good for idling around looking for fish. Max mode, which is our other option, is very good when you're looking for specifically at maybe a drop shot or a spoon directly under the boat. I prefer clear mode, again, for kind of idling around uh, scanning for bass. Um, I'm not going to turn on fish ID so we won't worry about that. Most of these other things I'm going to leave at factory settings. The max depth I will set on auto. Again that's going to allow it to automatically correct depending on how deep we are. Water type, again you're going to default to fresh and that's where I'm going to prefer uh, that we leave it for, for uh, bass fishing application. Okay. 
tires are on and mark those. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my shortcut keys. This is my absolute favorite feature of using this thing on the water are these three keys that you have on the Helix. If you've used the old 999s or 1199s or 1198s, you know these three shortcut keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the views that I use the most. So to toggle through my views, I'm just hitting my view button here. And everybody's going to set this up a little differently, but I'm going to show you how I like to set it up. So one that I really like is just my chart. I use this for navigation. I use this when I'm running the boat. And I like to have full screen, even on this 12, I like to have full screen so I can see where I'm going, see my boat, um, see the contours, shallow water, etc. To set that shortcut, I've already put it on that view. All I'm gonna do is hold down the shortcut key for about three seconds and it says shortcut saved. So let's go ahead and set our other shortcut. So we just set the shortcut for our chart or our map, which again is one I use all the time. Again, to toggle through the views that you've got, you just click the view button. Now, one that I really like to use is my side imaging along with my sonar. With the chirp sonar, you can really see some, some good detail. The, this looks kind of crazy because we've got the talons down and we're in about a foot of water so we're not getting a real good reading right here because it's basically my transducers on the bottom. But I'm going to set a shortcut here and again just like we did on the chart, I'm holding this down, set a shortcut and then there's another screen that I really like and that is my side imaging with my down imaging. So again, I'm going to set a shortcut here. So now basically as I'm idling around looking for bass, all I ever do is hit these three keys. I go my map, I'll look at my side and my sonar, and I'll look at my side and my down. And that really, really simplifies your time on the water. You're not constantly messing with menus. Once you've got that set, that's all that you really gotta do. Man, I gotta catch him on this drop shot. I threw that swim bait in there, crank bait. No bite the drop shot, not much. We idled over them. There were several of them sitting there. With no current. He thinks he's big. With no current, they just want something little. All right, little dude. school fired up there was there was 10 or 15 fish right there oh, it's funny this little one they sure didn't get it there we go a little keeper the exception to my rule uh, as far as using the 200 kilohertz for my 2d sonar is when you're running multiple units and the transducers are close to each other. You can get by with running two units, one on the back of the boat and one on the front at the same frequency, unless you're fishing very deep water because they're separated at a pretty good distance. But as most bass boats do today, I've got two units right here uh, at my console. If you're gonna run sonar from both of those units at the same time, they need to be on a different frequency. Um, I've gotten in a lot of boats to try to help guys sort of troubleshoot their units and they were running two units at the same frequency and they were getting a lot of interference. So if I were gonna do that with both of these units run sonar at the same time, I would either run one on chirp and one on 200 or I would one, run one on 200 and one on 83. If you're gonna look at sonar at the same time on two units, you really wanna separate your frequencies so that you don't get interference. Follow your track. A lot of times if the wind's blowing or if you catch a fish, I always leave my track on on my hummingbird so that you know the wind or the current or whatever moves you away from where you were. You can just follow that little, on, on mine I got a little red line, it just takes me right back to where I was when that last fish bit.
nest in a row. We hadn't done that yet. the big stuff at him and had to go little to catch him. There he is. I'm going to throw back in there and catch another one. Okay, so we've got our unit set up. Uh, I want to talk to talk real quickly about how we're going to save a waypoint. So to me, there's sort of three different ways that I'm going to put waypoints into my unit. The one that I'm going to use the most of the time is actually out there bass fishing. We're going to show you some footage on the water of how we physically mark a waypoint on fish. Uh, on the on the side imaging when we physically see fish But what I'm talking about now is how you actually record a coordinate either on your map or Let's say your buddy comes to you and says man. We got a tournament tomorrow and I found them I don't know how to get my waypoint onto your unit. So I'm going to show you how to do that um, One real easy thing you can do you can pull up this unit in your garage You can I'm gonna zoom way out here So we've got the whole Tennessee River here Barkley I can just cursor over to the part of the lake that I want to look at. Let's go down here. And we will go, this is probably the Blood River right here. So I'm going to get out in front, front of the Blood River. I'm going to say I want to look at some stuff there. I'm sitting in my garage one day bored and I'm going to try to mark some, some waypoints. So just by zooming in, and again we're not even on the lake, we could be doing this in our garage. I'm going to say, hey, alright, there's a little high spot. On my Lake Master map, and I'm you, you can see I'm just cursoring over, and I'm gonna put a waypoint right there because that's a spot that I want to check. This is very simple. I hit mark one time, and now I've saved a waypoint. Again, I'm in my garage, I'm not on the lake, but I'm scanning over my map, and if I see some stuff I want to hit, I'm gonna do that. Another way that you're gonna save a waypoint is the way most of us are gonna do it, and that is we're out on the lake one day, we catch a fish, and we immediately wanna save the location of where we're at. That is very simple. All you've gotta do is be on your map screen here, and we're gonna hit the mark button. So we're, of course, we're floating around in the back of a pocket here, but when I hit mark, you see my unit tells me that that waypoint is created, and it is saved exactly where this unit is. So the, the uh, GPS receiver is within the unit, and it is saved exactly where that unit was sitting that second that I hit the mark button. Let me show you real quickly how you're going to manually enter a waypoint. So again, your buddy says, man, they're loaded on this spot, and here's the coordinates, or you're going to fish a team tournament. Rather than uh, try to remember where the spot is, you want the exact coordinate. Again, I'm going to hit my menu screen when I am... Uh, when you can hit it from anywhere, but I'm going to hit menu twice. That brings up all of my uh, all of my tabs. Under my navigation tab, I go down to waypoints, uh, routes, and tracks. And again, to select that, I'm just going to arrow to the right. Now I'm going to take my cursor to options, new, and new waypoint. So this is the name of the waypoint. If I want to change that name, I can change the name there. I'm going to not change the name for right now. And I'm just going to scroll down here to my coordinates. Again, I'm just hitting my right arrow, and I can arrow over and change my latitude and longitude. It says very simply, check, it, check to save. We'll go down and change our east-west coordinates. I can change that however. Check mark to save, and then I'm going to save that waypoint. So I just saved waypoint 10. There's no telling where I saved that because I made those, those uh, coordinates kind of random, but that's how you're going to physically enter a waypoint uh, when you have one written or somebody gives you some coordinates.